Hi everyone, Whitney Lowe here and welcome to this week's Clinical Insights video. We're going to be talking this week about lateral thigh pain. The first thing that really comes to mind with lateral thigh pain is probably something like pain in the iliotibial band. It's a big structure, covers the most, like the largest area on the lateral aspect of the thigh. And if you feel it when you're working on somebody, it almost always feels like it's really tight. And that's because it's supposed to be. A lot of people don't realize the iliotibial band is a tendon and it's basically like a flat sheet tendon and it's supposed to be very dense because there's a lot of tensile force within that band to help maintain stability for the lower extremity. But when people feel lateral thigh pain, they often ascribe it to the iliotibial band, but in many cases, it's not. It's really something else, and that's what we're gonna take a look at today in our Clinical Insights video. We're gonna be looking at lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment. That's quite a mouthful. Sometimes this is called myralgia parasthetica. Basically what it is, it's an entrapment of a small nerve on the anterior aspect of the hip called the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve may be one that you haven't heard much about, but let's take a look at where it is and what it's doing here. So we're gonna zoom in real close here. We see all these major nerves coming off the lower lumbar area, and then those are all feeding into the sciatic nerve around the back side here and we can see that large sciatic nerve going right through there. Now on the front side here we have a larger nerve or smaller than the sciatic but it's the largest nerve on the front side here and this is the femoral nerve coming right down here off of the upper lumbar nerve roots and down the front side of the thigh. But right next to this uh, is another nerve here and this little guy right here is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. We're gonna highlight it here in the fuchsia color and let's just zoom up for a second and see its origin points. Now notice that it's coming off of branches generally from the L2 and L3 lumbar nerve roots. So if there is something like a disc protrusion pressing on nerve roots in this area, you're likely to have pain in the anterior thigh region because these are the nerve roots that feed into this large femoral nerve right here. But notice it branches off right here into the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So disc protrusions in this area in L2 and L3 can also produce that lateral thigh pain that might be coming from lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment. So that may happen up here at the nerve root level in the lumbar region, but more commonly we see this problem right down here in this region here. This is, of course, I'm going to zoom in real quick and highlight this structure here. This is the inguinal ligament. So this is a ligament that spans across from the ASIS over to the pubis. It's a very dense uh, sort of stiff ligament structure really just kind of maintaining stability of the pelvis there. These are really two immovable uh, parts of the pelvic uh, bone. So they're not really moving separate from each other, but we have this inguinal ligament spanning right across here. The key point to note here is that the femoral nerve and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, and let's highlight it once again. Let's uh, pick it right there up in fuchsia color, and we can see it going right underneath that inguinal ligament. Let's see if we can tip this up a little bit and see how close this is. Now, this may vary in its proximity across here, just depending on anatomical differences, but you can press that nerve a little bit against the edge of the bone right here or right up against the underside of that inguinal ligament, and that could cause some of the symptoms of lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, we look at that nerve and its eventual pathway, and remember the name of this nerve is a cutaneous nerve, which means it's a nerve of the skin, mainly providing sensory information. So predominantly a sensory nerve to the lateral thigh region. And you can see why people think this is iliotibial band pain because that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is running down the whole length of that lateral thigh, just like the iliotibial band does. So what are some of the primary causes of lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment? We mentioned a moment ago, intervertebral disc protrusions that might get those nerve roots, but more commonly around the inguinal ligament, we have other causes like prolonged sitting with tight pants on. If you're sitting like in a squatting position, you've got, let's say like tight jeans or something like that, they're likely to squeeze that nerve right across the anterior hip region and give those sensations. Mostly what we uh, see people having with this nerve entrapment is sharp pains, pins and needles, or electrical type sensations down the lateral thigh. So prolonged sitting in a position, especially anything that might pinch or cramp that anterior thigh region is likely to produce those sensations. Belts that are really tight. Let's say maybe you're a 
policeman or you know a construction worker and having to wear a heavy tool belt or you know a gun belt on your waist all day long with a significant weight on it that belt can press on that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and give those same kind of sensations out there one of the things that's interesting with these sensations from lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment is it's often a dull aching sensation that's frequently mistaken for some other types of conditions like trochanteric bursitis or um, trigger points in the gluteus medius or minimus or some other type of joint disorders in the hip region. So take note, it's important to look and see, might there be something like lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment causing some of those sensations in there? We may see other things like, you know, significant weight gain, like in pregnancy, or maybe somebody has just gained a great deal of weight that they can have um, excess adipose tissue pressing on that area right above the inguinal ligament, and that can press on the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and lead to additional nerve compression in there. And sometimes there may be other causes like poor posture or other types of biomechanical challenges that lead to additional compression in this area that might be causing those kind of sensations. So this is really important to try to pick these things up in your history with your clients so you can identify factors that might be leading to it. So in terms of our assessment, some of the things that we'll look for, the symptoms that somebody's likely to describe with lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment, pain that is described as sort of burning or tingling. I've actually had this myself. And for me, it was more of a dull aching kind of pain in the lateral hip region. I kept thinking it was gluteus medius and minimus trigger points. And I kept working on those muscles a great deal. And like, yeah, they were really tender and they hurt and it helped to work them a little bit, but it never really got the root of the problem addressed. And I kept having problems with it. I'm one of those people that I found that this was happening because I had been sitting a lot at a concert outdoors on the ground with some relatively tight jeans on that were compressing that part of the uh, anterior hip region. So once I figured out the nature of that problem and could change some of those factors, that made a big difference. So pain might get worse in certain positions like that. For example, like in sitting positions or any time you might be wearing that equipment belt or something that you're doing with your occupation that might be making it worse. Those are the kind of things that might lead to additional pain problems in there. Now, for some people, their pain will get worse with standing or walking because they're sort of stretching that nerve, that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, while they're doing their standing positions, while they're walking, and that additional stretch while the nerve is being compressed might be leading to additional aggravation with it as well. So try to identify any key biomechanical factors in their history that might be making that worse, leading to the irritation of that nerve. We've mentioned a few other things that are likely to cause similar symptoms that you need to watch for. You know, we mentioned lumbar radicular pain from nerve root compression might be getting the femoral nerve and this could get pain sensations felt down the anterior thigh region as opposed to lateral thigh. So try to get as specific as possible when you're taking your client history and identify if that pain is really on the lateral thigh or is it more on the anterior thigh region. Again, if it's posterior thigh region, you're probably looking at something involving the sciatic nerve and not these two nerves that are on the front side coming from the upper lumbar nerve roots. So we mentioned trochanteric bursitis. There's a bursa just over the greater trochana around this area. Let's take a look at that. So zooming in here again, let's highlight this. Here is our trochanteric bursa. And this, the, uh, the gluteus medius and ma gluteus maximus go right over this large greater trochana here. And you have this bursa sitting right here that is trying to reduce the friction between those muscles going over the greater trochanter. So you can get a dull sort of aching pain on that bursa that can be mistaken for lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment. One of the things that's different about the bursitis is usually uh, this is aggravated when people are lying down on the affected side because you can tell that's going to put additional compression forces on that bursa when you're lying on your side. Also, if you're doing your palpatory investigations, it's likely to be painful and, and sort of like a sharper, more irritated pain sensation when they press right on that trochanter and that will reproduce the primary pain. That's not likely to be the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve because again, it's running anterior to that region and not being aggravated when you press in that area. Other things to note during your assessment process, we mentioned how important it is to take a thorough and comprehensive history because that detailed history is where you're going to pick up a lot of the key information about things that might be aggravating this lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. But you can do some palpatory investigation around there and see if anything that you do when you press in around these regions right here aggravates that nerve. 
You might also get some degree of aggravation if they bring their hip up into full flexion because it's going to compress that nerve potentially, depending on, you know, maybe if they've got a, a greater deal of abdominal weight in this area, they're going to compress that nerve. Some people will get more irritation when their hip is pulled into extension because it pulls this nerve taut, and maybe it's pulling it taut against the underlying bone that's right underneath here as you pull that nerve back when the, the hip goes back in that direction there. So when you're doing your evaluations, your range of motion evaluations, look at the particular motions that tend to irritate that pain. That can tell you a lot because, for example, with something like trochanteric bursitis, those two hip motions should be irrelevant. They shouldn't increase or decrease any of the pain sensations with a trochanteric bursa problem, but they could definitely do that if you're getting a problem with that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Now, we spoke about iliotibial band before. You can have pain in the iliotibial band, and sometimes that's associated with tightness of the muscles that blend into it. Let's take a quick look at that iliotibial band one more time. So here we have tensor fascia lata, gluteus maximus, blending into that iliotibial band that's going down the side of the thigh. Now look at here is that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, and you can see it's got fibers going right over the top of that IT band. So you start working on that iliotibial band, for example, many of the ways that people advocate working on it with foam rolling or deep pressure massage or deep gliding techniques, trying to iron out or you know, get that IT band loose, you might further aggravate this lateral femoral cutaneous nerve by doing those types of things. So keep in mind, that's another reason that maybe it's not the best idea to try to do that for getting this area to sort of decrease in its irritability. You, If you're thinking that the iliotibial band is involved, focus on up here, tensor fascia lata, gluteus maximus, because those are the muscles that are pulling on that IT band, possibly making it over taut. So work on those muscles, and we'll talk about some strategies that might be helpful in addressing that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve here in just a moment. Now, treatment for our lateral femoral cutaneous nerve problems can get a little tricky because this is a nerve compression problem, and what we don't want to do is further irritate that nerve by compressing it more. So deep gliding, stripping techniques, deep broad contact surface techniques around here could possibly aggravate those symptoms. So just pay close attention to what your client is experiencing when you do those things and see if those sensations are aggravating any of the existing problems that they have, and if so, don't keep doing that. I have actually found some pretty good results doing some sort of myofascial type techniques, very light skin drag type of techniques where you sort of place your hand on the upper thigh region and just pull and stretch this tissue in an inferior direction here and just sort of mobilize those superficial cutaneous nerves and get that, sometimes you can get that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve freed up a little bit if you can get these muscles to relax. You know, we've got right here coming across here, the sartorius, you've got some of your adductors here, you've got abdominals coming across here. Again, we talked about working that tensor fascia lata there. If you can work all of these surrounding muscles, they might decrease the degree to which they're pinching or compressing that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So. Don't think about working directly on the nerve, but do think about a sort of secondary approach where we're trying to reduce tightness in the surrounding musculature and get it as freed up as possible. Sometimes techniques like neural mobilization methods where you try to get that nerve sort of moving adjacent to the or next to the structures that are just right adjacent to it with what's called neural mobilization techniques or nerve gliding or nerve flossing techniques. Those might be helpful to try to move the hip in full flexion back into full extension and get that nerve as mobilized as possible. I would do that after you've worked all of these other areas here first to get these muscles as relaxed as possible to try to free up that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and make it as mobile and free to move as possible. And lastly, we want to think about things like home care suggestions and ergonomic advice because these can be very crucial. They can be really the main thing that a person needs to change, which is maybe it's that clothing and maybe it's that tight belt. Maybe it's the prolonged sitting positions. Can they find a way to maybe recline in their chair just a little bit more? Do some things that will decrease compression on that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. And do remember that nerve compression problems are notoriously slow to heal. So it might take a while to really get that worked out as effectively as possible. So do your soft tissue work and try to encourage those home care suggestions along with the other things that you're doing in there. So next time a person comes in with lateral thigh pain, 
think about could be iliotibial band involvement, but there's a good likelihood it might be something like lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment. So go through these notes about the things to assess and to evaluate. Pay attention to the anatomical factors. Pay key attention to the things that they say in the client history that might be aggravating factors leading to greater compression of that nerve. And then your soft tissue work can really focus on making the best results with them possible. So be sure to click the like button and subscribe to our channel so you can keep up with the other videos that we put out there on all kinds of clinical treatments like this, uh, clinical problems that can be benefit, uh, beneficially treated with uh, a lot of your massage treatment techniques. We'd love to have some input from you, so feel free to send in any questions or comments in the comment section below. And make sure to come on over and take a look at some of our courses where we delve into things like this lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment, lots more things like that in the hip and pelvis region. And you can find information on our courses over at Academy of clinicalmassage.com. We we'll look forward to seeing you over there and hopefully to see you in the next video as well.